Everybody's here. We have almost a full house. This is great. And to everybody who is watching us uh, live stream on Facebook, welcome too. And if you're worried, today is a beautiful day, but if you're worried about it being too chilly here in our beautiful <laughs> pavilion, we have some new heaters that really make it toasty. Matter of fact, we had to turn them off this morning because it was a little too warm. So <clears throat> that said, uh, I wanted to uh, share a reading before we start from The Course of Miracles. And if anybody is familiar with The Course of Miracles, you know that it is uh, all in the masculine. He, him, his, mm -hmm. son. And um, when I first started reading it, that kind of bothered me. And so when I would read to myself, I would just change it into the me and my and sometimes she. And so um, I'm going to share uh, lesson 306. And I'm changing the pronouns, just if you're familiar with that. You rebel. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, the gift of Christ is all I seek today. What but Christ's vision would I use today when it can offer me a day in which I see a world so like to heaven 
that an ancient memory returns to me. Today, I can forget the world that I made. Today, I can go past all fear and be restored to love and holiness and peace. Today, I am redeemed and born anew into a world of mercy and of care, of kindness, loving kindness, and of the peace of God. And so, our Father, we return to you, remembering we never left and went away, remembering your holy gifts to us. In gratitude and thankfulness, we come with empty hands and open hearts and minds, asking only what you give. We cannot make an offering sufficient for your son, but in you, but in your love, the gift of Christ is ours. And so we're gonna change the order of service just a little bit this morning, I'm going to ask Margaret to come back up, and she's going to light the Advent candles. Thank you, Phil. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Ah, two Sundays in a row with a full house. What's happening here? <laughs> So let's all take a deep breath and give thanks for this wonderful day. The sun is behind the clouds today. That's okay because the pavilion is all lighted up with the Christmas tree decorations. Gifts are arriving for the Help for Kids project and we are giving thanks once again. Y'all might, might get tired of us giving thanks all the time for this beautiful place. Yes. This beautiful land. So as we take our deep breath and going along with the reading that Carol did, you know, we are on a journey and the journey is to the within. And the journey of Jesus being born into the world, it's a metaphor, the consciousness of Christ, the consciousness of compassion and love and peace was born into the world. And we are designed to birth the Christ into the world as well. We're on our own journey. And the journey of birthing the consciousness of Christ. <clears throat> when someone says to you, what do you do for a living? <laughs> I'm birthing the consciousness of Christ <laughs> in the world. It enlivens me. It heals and renews me. I'm birthing that into the world. And they're likely to ask another question or gently walk away. We don't know. <laughs> so today we want to relight our Advent candle for hope and faith. And then last Sunday we lit the second candle for peace. And today we light the candle for love because with all the knowledge that we get all the learning that we like to do all the experiences that we have if we don't have love then we're not getting the whole point so on our journey in birthing the Christ we call forth faith and hope we call forth peace we call forth love. All these powers, these capacities are within us. And that's what we celebrate. So as we go into our next song, we're going to pass a little basket. And it has some little love tokens. They're little uh, decorations that you can hang on your tree or in your window. And they have different words. This particular one has faith. And I'm going to ask you to take one because we want them to still be here next Sunday when people come who aren't here today. <laughs> so please choose one, and as we pass the basket, we will have our next song, and thank you, music team, for being here. We love you so much, and the next song is Put a Little Love in Your Heart. 
perfect for our Advent candle for love. This will be your guide. to introduce our wonderful Unity Band. Here they are, our wonderful <laughs> Unity Band. Let's go. You know who you are. <laughs> okay, let's be serious. Um, um, I wanted to share with everybody here our um, The Prayer of Jesus which is translated from the Aramaic, which is the, um, the language of Christ, the language of Jesus. And um, they should be on the back of your chairs. I'm sure most of you know it by heart right now. And so uh, we will be sharing this together. Father, mother, birther, and breath of all, Create a space inside of us and fill it with your presence. Let oneness now prevail. Your one desire then flows through ours as energy fills all form. Give us this day our physical and spiritual nourishment and untangle the knots of error that bind us as we release others. Do not let appearances make us forgetful of the source, but free us to act appropriately. From age to age, through you, flow the glorious harmonies of life. May these words be fertile statements through which our future grows. Amen, amen, and amen. And our reading this morning um, from the Daily Word is love. I answer the call to love, embracing the world. Love is both a noun and a verb. More than just a feeling, it is one of the highest intentions I can hold and one of the most sacred actions I can take. Love is the name and nature of God. The pulsation of oneness from the center of my heart to the farthest reaches of earthly existence. On this third Sunday of Advent, love is also a call to action, an invitation to perceive the world through the Christ presence and live as the love that I am. I open my heart and let my love flow forth as kindness, gentleness, and compassion. 
I stay grounded in the presence of God through my prayers and I radiate love through my kind words and actions. I trust my loving impulses and reach far and wide. The light and joy I send forth grow and expand to encompass all things. And the Bible verse is 1 John 3.18. Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. Amen. And uh, again, the, um, if you will say with me, the, um, the heading, I answer the call to love, embracing the world. I answer the call to love, embracing the world. Thank you. Now, uh, Margaret will be giving uh, the meditation this morning and the message, What Are We Doing? And before that, uh, our Unity team here will be blessing us with Silent Night before the meditation. <coughs> singing yes. silent night now we can clap <laughs> uh, sometimes at the end of a song like that I think oh don't clap yet, don't clap yet. <laughs> let it be so let the silence be felt let the silence be felt throughout the land so here we are it's the season of many uh, cultures many spiritual paths uh, we celebrate the journey in metaphysics, we celebrate, of course, as I was just saying, the journey, our own journey, to go to the within, to know who we truly are. <coughs> this holy day, this season, is based on uh, 
spiritual days that preceded Christmas as we know it, thousands of years. So we're, we're sitting on top of something that human beings have done throughout the ages. And so we celebrate at the darkest time of year when there's the least amount of sunlight. We celebrate bringing the light. We celebrate being the light. And so whether you identify as Christian, Muslim, Buddhist, Hindu, we all, all of these spiritual paths celebrate being the light and bringing the light. So I'd like to go into meditation this morning with a reading from a book entitled The Third Jesus. And if you've been in this church very long, you know that we did this class twice through the years. It's a book written by Deepak Chopra. Third Jesus. The first Jesus is the historical Jesus, that which we, the things we know about the possibility that this man historically lived and breathed and had his being and did his work. So we have the historical Jesus. Then the second Jesus is the Jesus that we are told about, taught about, you know, there are the teachings from Jesus, and there are the teachings about Jesus. And sometimes the teachings about Jesus, I feel, have been true, and sometimes they have been very hurtful in the world. So we celebrate the teachings of Jesus, the wisdom teachings of Jesus. So the second Jesus is the Jesus we were told about, taught about. The third Jesus... Do you know who the third Jesus is? He'll be here any second. <laughs> the third Jesus is the consciousness that lives within all of us. So when, when some Christian groups teach about the return of Jesus, they teach about a literal return physically of one person. In New Thought or Unity, we teach about the coming of the consciousness that arise within the hearts of all humankind, no matter our culture or religious upbringing. The coming of this consciousness is the coming of the cosmic Christ or the what Chopra called the third Jesus. So with that little introduction, this is a quote from the book of Thomas, one of the forbidden books, so that's why we read it. <laughs> Barnes and Nobles has a whole display of the books that have been banned. Have y'all seen that? <laughs> okay, so from the Forbidden Book of Thomas. This is entitled, Know Thyself. Jesus, it is said, Jesus allegedly said, if a guide tells you, see, the kingdom of God is in the sky, then the birds of the air will get there before you do. And if this guide tells you, the kingdom of God is in the sea, then the fish will get there before you do. But rather, Jesus said, the kingdom is inside you and outside you at the same time. When you come to know yourself, then you will know. You will realize then that it's you who are the sons and daughters of the living God. But as long as you do not know yourself, then you do not know God, and you live in a poverty of spirit. So I think we better get busy knowing ourselves. Mm -hmm. To know thyself is to know the kingdom of heaven. Now, why do you think they wanted to forbid that book? <laughs> Because we don't need a preacher or a priest or a rabbi to give us that kingdom. It's already within us. And one of the things we celebrate with gifts is honoring the gifts that are already within us. So let's take a deep breath. We take a deep breath into the core of our being, known by many names. 
we breathe into this place known as the kingdom of heaven, the all that is, the holy presence, holy spirit, universal mind, divine consciousness. We breathe into the gift of light that lives within us. I invite you to consider that your consciousness is the miracle. Your consciousness of light being birthed through you is the miracle. The consciousness of love and peace and forgiveness and acceptance is the miracle. It's you. And so as we take a few moments of silence, I invite each one of us to let our hearts and minds open to this divine idea that what is inside of us is healing the world. What is inside of us is the light. <clears throat> Let us feel the wonder, the awe, and that light that resides inside of each one of us. <clears throat> we take a deep breath, we give thanks. Give thanks for remembering, and we say, so it is, and so we let it be. Now turn to somebody and say, you are the light. You are the light. You are the light of the world. Hi, Sally. Oh, OK, I see. I thought you were waving at me. No, OK. <laughs> Don't let me forget that, please. Okay. <laughs> so how many of you have been watching on Facebook or the news or from your friends in Hawaii sending you images of the volcano on the big island that's erupting? How many of you have seen it? Oh, is that amazing? So one of my friends uh, from Unity of Hawaii posted an image of a drone flying over the volcano. So you can see these rivers, the rivers of fire and lava moving through <coughs> and under the ocean, creating new land, creating new land mass. We're watching it happen. This is a photo of what happened billions of years ago. We're watching it. And I've watched it several times with this idea in mind that I'm watching a miracle. The word miracle means in Latin to wonder or to marvel. And so we might wonder or marvel at a person, a place, a thing, an event that provokes wonder or awe. So when I watch this volcano erupting and this new landmass being created, I feel wonder and awe. Do you? Yeah. I marvel at it. So here's the trick question. What if we had that same kind of awe at what is unfolding and being created through us? What if we had that same kind of awe at the light, the fire, the creativity that lives within us? We would just be walking around saying how awesome we are all the time. <laughs> what do you do for a living? I'm being awesome. 
<laughs> so to review a quote from Charles Fillmore, it's one of my favorites, so you've heard it before, you probably know it by heart by now. Charles Fillmore said, we have within ourselves a greater capacity, an infinitely greater magnitude that stretches back to infinity itself, that we can form new combinations, rearrange the three-dimensional world, and thereby continue indefinitely to develop new possibilities from the inexhaustible storehouse of elements. <sighs> Did you know that's who you were? So I look at that volcano and I think of this, this quote from Fillmore. We have within us this inexhaustible storehouse of elements from which we continually create new possibilities, things we haven't even seen before. So with that set up, I ask the question, what are we doing? <laughs> this question is often asked in exasperation, right? <laughs> My mother. It was often, what are the heck are you doing? <laughs> or she would invoke someone's name, often a holy person. <laughs> what in God's name are you doing? <laughs> right? Often the question is asked with an insinuation that we are doing something wrong. What are you doing? What are you doing? Or my mother would often be driven to prayer and it came out like this. Oh, dear father, what are you doing now? <laughs> <clears throat> so what I'm going to do this morning is invite all of us to ask the question with a little bit of different kind of energy. To ask that question with some divine curiosity, with some trust in universal mind and the one presence. I mean, to ask the one presence, what are we doing? Some of us had the great privilege of knowing Hilda Charlton. She used to wake up in the morning, she told me, and her first question was, God, what are you up to today? I'd like to be a part of it. Universe, what are you up to today? I'd like to participate. I'd like to have a part in that. So what if we ask the question, what are we doing with reverence, with a sense of enthusiasm, with a sense of the sacred? What if we ask that question that way? Because believe me, through the years in my life, and especially with this church through the years, I have often awakened at 2 a.m. and thought, what are we doing? <laughs> but now I ask that question with an absolute assurance that spirit brings the right people, the right ideas, the right creative uh, presence at the right time. Amen. You bet. Amen. So what are we doing? Asked like a prayer. Oh God, what are you up to today? I'd like to be a part of it. And when we're in conversation with spirit, it's polite to wait for the answers. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite stories and if, again, for those of you who've been with this church for a number of years, you've heard this at least once. It's the story about Sir Christopher Wren. He lived way back in the 1600s, about the time that the Holy Word of God was put in a book called the King James Version of the Bible. And a whole lot was left out, but that's another story. So Sir Christopher Wren, he was one of the most famous architects in history. Why do you think that is? After the huge fire in London, known as the Great Fire, 
he helped to rebuild 52 churches in London, including his most famous rebuild. Sometimes churches are rebuilt. So his most famous rebuild, do you know what it was? There you go. Our world traveler, St. Paul's Cathedral. St. <laughs> Paul's Cathedral. So here's how the story goes. One day, Sir Christopher Wren was out overlooking the building project of St. Paul's Cathedral, and he observed three bricklayers. And he went up to the first bricklayer, and he said, what are you doing? And the bricklayer says, I'm a bricklayer. I'm making bricks. I'm laying bricks. This is my job, to feed my family. It's my job. That's good. That's good. And Christopher Wren went to the second bricklayer, and he says, what are you doing? And the bricklayer said, well, I'm a builder. I'm building a wall. That's good. And Christopher Wren went to the third bricklayer and said, what are you doing? And the third bricklayer said, ah, I'm building a great cathedral. Now, all of the answers were correct. The third one knew that he was a cathedral builder. It's good to have a skill to know how to make bricks, right? When we lived in Taos, we would watch some of the people make their adobe bricks. Fascinating. That's a good skill. And it's a good skill to know how to build walls, right? That's a good skill. Where I feel spirit is guiding all of us in our personal lives and in the world and in this, the life of this beautiful church community is that third understanding that what we're doing, it's so much bigger than delivering gifts to Help for Kids, by the way. Did you look at all the gifts that have arrived for Help for Kids? But it's more than just giving a gift at Christmas. It's having an attitude that we want to be a helping presence in the world so we find the places where we can help and do what we can with what we have. I'm building a cathedral. Now, of course, literally, we're probably not building a cathedral. However, what we're building here, the energy is just as powerful as any cathedral I've ever been in in Europe or anywhere else. And that's the truth. So we lay our bricks when we need to lay our bricks. We build our walls when we need to build the walls, the driveways, the parking lots, the refurbs. We do all that. What drives us and fills us with the greatest life energy, what gives us the greatest strength and enthusiasm, is being connected with the higher purpose of what we're doing, no matter what that is in our lives. Whether we're buying gifts for our children, our grandchildren, our community, our friends, whether we're delivering food, whether we're writing a note, whether we're making a phone call, whatever we're doing, we're helping to create the healing presence and hope in the world and helping one another find our way home. Where is home? that inner place, the kingdom of heaven. That's what we're doing. What are you doing? What's the calling? The first bricklayer spoke truthfully. He said, it's my job. I'm paying the bills. That's good. That's good. The second bricklayer, he said, I'm a, I'm a builder of walls. That's good. It's a skill. It's a good skill. If you live in Ireland, you want to have this skill. The third bricklayer, however, was connected with the higher purpose. He probably knew that it, he may not see the entire cathedral complete in his lifetime. Though just the same, he was connected with the building of a bigger, higher project that went way beyond building a wall. Y'all see where I'm headed. What we're doing here... Somebody said to me very recently, um, this is our sanctuary. 
right here, right now. Amen. We're not spending a whole lot of time thinking about, oh, isn't it going to be great when we have a sanctuary with real walls and real AC and <laughs> nobody has called me to say, when are the heck are we going to get a real sanctuary with real walls and AC and heat? What are you doing? Mm -hmm. Nobody has called to say that. As a matter of fact, some people have said, this is the most beautiful sanctuary I've ever been in. <laughs> so we connect with the higher purpose of our lives, of our projects, of our uh, anything we put our time and energy into, a calling, a higher knowing, it reflects our universal need to matter. We want our lives to make a difference. And so whether we're throwing our energy behind PBS or NPR or Help for Kids or any organization we feel is doing good work in the world, we want to connect with people who are the cathedral builders. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. So Viktor Frankl wrote a book after his extraordinary experience in the Holocaust and in the death camps. And as a psychiatrist, he observed that whole event with some different kinds of eyes than some folks. He wrote a book called The Meaning of Life. And he wrote about how some people survived the Holocaust better than others. Some people, of course, didn't survive at all. But the ones who were able to hold on and to be set free from that horrible event, he said one of the things he identified was those who felt they had a purpose or a deeper reason to continue to live. In other words, their quest became live another day because, and then they had their, their reason, what that because was, their higher purpose. You know, to live and get back home to the family, to the children, to help the community, to, to survive, to get back home to the people who mattered. They lived, Frankel said, beyond themselves. And they helped other people in the death camp. They helped other people to survive. They saw it as their highest purpose to help other people get through the hard times. He said the people who were, who were focused primarily on their own survival were the ones who didn't survive they were the ones who gave up the most quickly. So those who survived found some meaning in their painful circumstances. Let's take a deep breath on that. We're invited to find meaning even in the painful circumstances, to find meaning in the world even when there are events that we do not understand or that are breaking our hearts. These people who survived found that Caring for and helping others gave them strength. Isn't that great? So we find our purposes, our callings for particular times in history, and we find our purposes and calling each day, each week. I have to, or I don't want to get up. I have to feel my connection with something bigger than me. So, this center, this church, we're laying bricks, we're building walls, but most importantly, we're building this presence, this energy. We're not literally building a cathedral, of course not, but energetically, yes. So last week, I, or a few weeks ago, I quoted Dr. Paul Pearsall in his book, Making Miracles. He said, miracles don't just happen. They are made at the center of the universe, and the center of the universe is our human consciousness. Where are miracles being made? At the center of Sonny's consciousness, at the center of Jesus' consciousness, at the center of Dan's consciousness. That's where miracles are being made. So, we are the center of the universe. So what are we doing? This vision, this idea that we call unity. So we're having a brief 
uh, reef <laughs> town hall meeting this afternoon right after service. We have cookies and coffee to hold people over. We just, we want to give an update. What are we doing? We want to give you an update on some of the things that have been done, yet to be done, some of the ideas about uh, the barn, what's going to happen with the barn, the sanctuary, all of that. And we invite everybody to attend. If some of you mm -hmm. new folks want to know what are we doing, then you are, everybody's invited to stay and give your creative input. But I got a question recently, and this is a really important question. Is unity still a church? Yes. So I asked, well, tell me what that means. See, I was trained. <laughs> tell me what you mean. <laughs> Is unity still a church? And the next part of the question, and it's a good question, by the way. The next part of the question was, well, you have these community gardens, and you have these daylily beds, and you're having a drum circles, over here. What, are you still a church? My answer was, unity is more of a church now than it ever has been. <laughs> we are building community. We are, we, are ex we are welcoming people from many paths, many spiritual places and understanding, many cultures, welcoming them here. This place in my heart and mind is a center, and we might call it a center of healing, a center of teaching, a center of peace, a center of hope, and we have church services on Sunday morning, and we have classes, and we have book groups, and we have art classes, and we have green team, and we have daylily projects, and community garden projects. We are a community sharing this spiritual divine idea that unity can be created in the world. Well, hallelujah. So, part of my answer to this wonderful person, because it's a great question, part of my answer was, you know, church was already shifting and changing long before COVID. And then when COVID came along, things really shifted and changed, right? So I asked, how do I answer this question? So the first thing that happened, I heard an NPR uh discussion last week, D, it's the day we went to lunch, whatever day that was, Wednesday or Thursday, and it was about how many churches have closed their doors. Not just Unity churches, churches across the board have closed their doors, and how people just aren't coming back to church the way they used to, especially the younger ones. Now, younger used to mean for me 20 or 30, but now it means 50 and 60. <laughs> so, but then uh, yesterday, Maureen Levy, y'all, some of y'all know Maureen Levy, longtime unity person. She sent me an NPR article from their website. The title is, As Attendance Dips, Churches Change to Stay Relevant for a New Wave of church goers. They're arriving right now on the bus. <laughs> so this is from Knoxville, Tennessee. It's Sunday morning and a small group sits around a fire pit in a community garden under the limbs of an expansive oak tree. Church is about to start. The pastor, Pastor Chris Battle, he said three years ago I walked away from more than three decades of leading Baptist churches and turned my attention toward the battlefield farm and gardens in Knoxville. They grow vegetables and sell them at a farmer's market and they collect unsold produce from around the city and deliver it to people in public housing once a week. He says he left traditional church because he was no longer able to connect with the people. He felt they were turned off by his sermons, his pitches for money, and his formality of his services. So I said to myself, Pastor Battle said, maybe we need to do church differently. 
But what does that look like? He said, I know I'll go to that garden and sit in that garden. Well, the long story short, he became a part of the community gardens, and that's where they hold church on Sunday now. <laughs> he said, people aren't looking for a fancy building. They're burned out on traditional religion, but they do want a community of faith, and they do want to be in a community of spiritual understanding. One congregant said, I want to sit down on Sundays around the fire like this and pray and recenter and figure out what the world is about because the world is very noisy now. So when I come to this church and sit around the fire, I feel community and I feel hope. And I'm going, this is us. <laughs> so this pastor delivers a brief sermon. We'll see if I can get to that part. Okay. This pastor delivers a brief sermon and then they talk about it. And then instead of altar calls or Holy Communion, the congregation, it's just about 12 people right now, they tend the 50 raised beds of kale and eggplant, and string beans and squash and the compost pile to get ready to deliver it the following week to communities who need it. He said, we're trying to create this community that people can learn to love each other, ultimately love the world, and transform it through collard greens and okra. <laughs> Isn't that great? Now, I don't know about y'all, but I feel like things come along at the right time, including this article. It goes on to talk about an Episcopalian church in Knoxville that people aren't coming on Sunday anymore, but they show up on Wednesday night to do yoga underneath the stained glass windows. <laughs> Isn't that great? Now, why is it important to talk about this right now? Because you and I, I feel, are building something extraordinary. We have been for a long time. Anton reminded me a few weeks ago, he said, this is what we were visioning back in 2006 when we started having the first visioning groups of what we wanted for this church community. It took us a little bit of time. 2006, we were saying, we want trees, we want land, we want a sense of being a center of peace and hope in the world. And we want to do church services on Sunday and the classes and all of that. But there's something else that wanted to find us and we didn't know what it was until we got here. And it's still unfolding. We're still understanding aspects of the vision that we didn't know about when we purchased this land. What are we doing? You know, when somebody says to you, what's Unity doing over there anyway? <laughs> Ah, we're increasing the light. We're, being, we're building a presence of love. We're building a presence of peace. We are a center of hope. It's important how we answer the question. So we're going to keep answering the question at the town hall meeting. And we're going to keep answering the question as we together build this extraordinary center of peace and hope. And are we a church? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, we are a church. What is a church? <clears throat> Definition of church. People who gather with like mind, with like understanding. People who gather and want to pursue the higher consciousness. We are a church community. So let's take a deep breath. Lots of deep breaths because we need to breathe. <laughs> we need to breathe more into the heart of hearts. What are we doing? We are being the light. We are being the presence of hope and peace in the world. We are being a giant, huge, open door for people to walk through and feel their connection with spirit and one another. 
we give thanks for knowing this much and our hearts and minds are open to knowing even more of what are we doing. Namaste. 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 I think I have the next part, don't I? Oh yes. Okay. So on the on the um, on the order of service, it says, "Give some words of gratitude for the message." <laughs> so <laughs> I'm so grateful I get to give that message here to this group of open hearts and open minds. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we are now to the part where we receive your offerings, your donations, your tithes, and we give great thanks for all those who give. We have people out here digging in the dirt. We have people who write the checks, and we have people who come and do heavy lifting, and people who come and sing on Sunday morning. We're all doing something extraordinary to build this presence of healing. So... As you come forward, can I have that please? As you write your uh, checks or give your tithes, we want to also, because what would a service be without a sign-up sheet? So um, on, on Wednesday the 21st, y'all know that's winter solstice, um, we are going to have an event out here and we will we'll start at 5 o'clock with soups, sweets, and ciders. And so we're passing around a sign-up sheet for you to write in what you can bring that evening. So 5 p.m., soup, sweets, and cider. Say that fast. Soup, soup sweets, sweets, and cider. cider. <laughs> and then... At 6 o'clock, we'll have music with the music team, and we will have an open mic. So how many of you are poets? You have your poetry you can read. How many of you would like to share a song? Maybe an interpretive dance. We don't know. But we're going to have an open mic, and it'll be fun, and that's Wednesday the 21st. So that sign-up sheet is going around now. So we take a deep breath. We give thanks for all of the ways support comes to this beautiful community through money, through energy, through creativity, through the treasures that are given to this church in many ways. We give thanks most especially for the way this community holds unity in their hearts. The whole divine idea of being a part of creating unity in the world. And we give such great thanks. We say, so it is, and so we let it be. Namaste. And now we got our offering song, and we all know this one. Angels, we have heard on high.
it feel good to sing it? Doesn't it? I can feel all my ancestors going, there they are, they're singing that beautiful song. So we give thanks for all of the offerings that have come in in this moment, the ones that have been mailed in, all the ways this community is blessed. We give thanks for building this extraordinary presence, this center of hope and healing, peace and acceptance. We give thanks and we say, so it is, and so we let it be. Namaste. And then we go, yoo-hoo! That's a new spiritual term. <laughs> So, everybody, we are here at the welcoming and the announcements. We want to welcome everybody who is here who and anybody who's here for the first time. Anybody here for the first time? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Do you mind standing and giving us your name? <laughs> Hi, I'm Nikki. Hi, Nikki. Hi. Glad to see you. <laughs> and you're from Myrtle Beach, I expect. You grew up in Myrtle Beach, North Myrtle Beach. Welcome, Nikki. Welcome. And anybody who hasn't been here for a long, 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 long time. Ethan, would you stand, honey? So. Ethan is Ken and Bunny's son, y'all, and a lot of you don't know Ethan, but he's been a big part of this church community for a long time. It's so great to see you, Ethan. Yay. Today, as we know, we're doing a brief town hall meeting <laughs> after the service. Everybody's welcome to ask your questions. Every question is welcome. And we will share with you the answers that we have. And uh, we have cookies in the back, and coffee is arriving to that table in the back any second now. So you can go into the house and use the bathroom. We have our glorious portable bathroom unit out here called a porta potty. Everybody do what you need to do and come on back uh, in about five to eight minutes. <laughs> we'll start our town hall. Uh, you have been, you see a sheet on your chairs, I believe, they were distributed before the service about the community <clears throat> gardens and the seed money grant challenge. Uh, several of us have given for that challenge and it continues through December 15th. There's still time to help out with that. We are over $1,200 at this point. We give thanks for the generosity, and if you'd like to push us even higher on that scale for the possibility of matching seed money, then you are welcome to go online. It has to be online for your money to be a part of the seed money challenge. So those pages are on your chair or in your hand at this time. Next Sunday... Reverend Dr. Cassandra Butler will be our speaker. I'm looking forward to that. She is speaking on the season of joy. Your December month at a glance is on the back table. It tells you all of the exciting events that are going on, including the winter solstice, which is Wednesday evening the 21st. We will have church service here Christmas Sunday morning at 11 a.m., and then our following Sunday will be the burning bowl on January 1st. The Christmas service will be the candlelight service for this year. So we hope everyone can be with us. So all that schedule is in your December month at a glance. And we also have another little short form for you to hand out to your friends, your family, so they can see what we're doing here for the holidays. And you have the sign-up sheet for the 21st, and if you want to participate in the open mic, let me know or Charlene or Dave Lacombe so we can get you on that schedule. We have signed some of you up for an interpretive dance, so you need to check with us to see who you are. <laughs> All right, are there any other announcements? Yes, sir. Uh, I'd like to thank Kyle for cleaning the place 
and we've got a new sign-up sheet for anybody who wants to uh, clean on a weekly basis. Okay, so, well, we ask for one person per week. You can come on Saturday or early Sunday morning, but to tidy up the pavilion and pick up the debris and get us ready for the coming Sunday. So that sign-up sheet is back there. Okay, everybody take a deep breath. Oh, we get our breathing done here at this service. We have one more announcement. And that is we're moving into the time of the year where we start thinking about our board of directors and people who might want to sit on the board of directors. Uh, our annual meeting is at the end of January. But if you want to start praying on that and thinking about it, talk to me, Sally Reynolds, your board president, and let us know if you would like to participate as a board member. <clears throat> Believe me, you're never bored. <laughs> okay, y'all, we are going to say our updated prayer of unity and then go into our peace song and then do our little take care of ourself and then be back here at 1213 for the town hall meeting. The bereaved town hall meeting. So our updated prayer for protection inspired by James Dillett Freeman, who wrote this during World War II for all those serving in that war. The light of God surrounds us. The presence of love enfolds us. The power of peace protects us. And the one presence that lives within all creation enlivens us. Wherever we are, love is, peace is, light is, God is, and all is well. And that's the truth. Y'all, let's stand for our peace song. We sing it like a prayer.